Good morning. Welcome back to Bible and Blues. Um, uh, stick around because if you're here for the Bible reading, uh, we're going to be doing Psalm 136 uh, here, in, here in a few minutes. And uh, if this is um, this uh, this one is uh, if you um, you know sing in church, you'll probably recognize. If you sing anything close to contemporary music in church, you'll recognize uh, the psalm. If you uh, if you if you listen to the, uh, a Christian radio station, it's one of the Ten songs they play on Christian radio stations. Um, I don't listen to a lot of Christian radio stations because they only play about ten songs. I don't listen to a lot of radio. So beyond that, oh look at that! I can get a little reflection off of my watch. I'll be careful with that. So, uh, but today, you know, I mean, I posted this on my Facebook because I kind of had a revelation. I kind of noticed something. Yeah, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know, I mean, uh, based on my pre-reading commentary, like I'm doing right now. Um, uh, so I, I, I kind of have it out for uh, militant atheists, okay, and you know, and they, yeah, well, atheists in general, but mostly the ones that uh, are, are trying to fabricate and straw man their way into their faith of atheism. So, um, so one of the things, ooh, bug. Uh, so one of the things um, that they, they like to bring up is trying to claim that uh, Christians say that the world is only six thousand years old. And there, and, and uh, hey, I, I, I know some that do that. It's the the Ken Ken Ham uh, group, and there's a, there's there's a bunch of them, and there's actually PhDs, yeah, people with PhDs and scientists, geologists, uh, who give evidence to kind of back that concept up. Um, so it's not without 100% without merit. However, uh, I would say that 85% of the po of the Christian population, uh, and probably higher than that, really have no problem with the Earth being. 13.8 billion years old okay so when you when you tell them that they'll try to say well sh well sh you know, it's in your bible and you know i mean for, for a little while there i mean because i'm, I'm kind of new to this whole thing about you know coming after atheists like this and uh, i didn't have much for that uh then i came to a sudden realization yesterday that you know there is no place in the bible actually that dates the earth that says this is when it began. There's this is how it began. Okay, not this is where it began or when it began or, or anything like that. Uh, so I, I mean, the Book of Genesis is you know gives some very great um, poetic language of the how. Um, you know, and you know, there's there's certain. There's a couple of Christian movies out there that kind of address it to a certain extent. And, it's, and they're enjoyable movies, and I kind of like them. And they give, and, you know, there's a mathematician that actually utilizes, you know, the concept of light, okay, uh, being a constant, and the speed of light being a constant, uh, to, you know, express how, uh, you know, you know we're we'll essentially, we're in the, you know, the seventh day now. Um, so, and have been for some time. So... In the end of the seventh day is the second coming. Well, okay, so you know that, that's that that's the concept, okay. And you know, it's, it's kind of like you know the rapture uh, is an extrapolation of reading. It's not. It's not the actual. It's not actually the word. The ra rapture is nowhere in the actual Bible, okay. But for some reason, people you know glom onto it very very strongly, because it gives them an answer, I guess. Uh, of, of how things are going to happen. It's just like people saying the Earth is, is six thousand years old. Here's what happened. You know, it's, you know, and you know, where does that come from? That's not actually in the Bible. And that's one of the things I had to, I had an understanding about. And it's a, and and so so if an atheist, if you if you're like me and you'll occasionally, you know, poke on, poke an atheist with their stupid uh, Facebook memes. Um, I found us, uh, you know, just so you know, anti-atheist memes. Google that. There's some good ones. Uh, you know, nowhere near as many as anti-Christian memes, but you know, we haven't done a very good job on the internet, have we? We're always trying to be nice. So anti-atheist memes are out there. So you know, if you feel like you know poking the bear, you know, be prepared uh, to defend your faith. But you know, it's there. So um, so they bring that kind of thing up all the time, though. It's just, but this is a straw man. It's a complete straw man. It's, it's an uninformed fallacy that uh, the earth is only 6,000 years old and it says so in the Bible. They use, you know, the people who have come up with this idea have used sources within the Bible to 
you know, and extrapolate and conclude things. However, there is no facts in there about it. So, of dates and ages and stuff like that, uh, you know. So it's uh, it's 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 kind of it's it's a fallacy. It's a it's an it's a strong man. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. So uh, if you're out there, use it, please do. Uh, you know, and and then watch the atheist backpedal a little bit. Well, this person says it, and that person says it, and it's like, okay. And what's your problem with it? You know, them saying it. I didn't say it. You said it. You you just put a big generality over all the Christians in the world that you think they all believe exactly that, and majority don't. So I would like for you to just utilize that. You know, I, I guess. And part of the thing is that uh, you know, at church yesterday we did have a talk. Uh, uh, it was it, we're go, we're doing Genesis uh, in church. And the concept of Adam and Eve, Eve in, in um, uh, you know, and there's a whole other talk I can give right there about that. Uh, that, uh, um, you know, were they real people? Okay. Um, first off, uh, I don't know. I didn't meet them. I don't know them. Uh, you know, a Bible literalist will say, yes, they were. Um, and so... And that's and and so there's um, and so 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 there's a, a method to that kind of thing. Uh, the question is, is this something that you're going to say? Yes, they existed. No, they didn't. Or are you going to say, I don't know. But here's some great stories about how we should be acting, or how God might you know how we feel God you know would use this story to help us to be better people. So, you know, and follow His path better. So. There's there's some there's some ideas there anyway uh, like I said I can that's a whole nother talk and I do have to get into work soon so without further ado let's go ahead first off if you anything that you thought about that little conversation if you have something to say about it put it down below maybe you're a believer in the in the young earth maybe you're a believer in the ancient earth maybe you're sitting there going I don't know never really thought about it you know um, or maybe you've had an encounter with an atheist like I have have recently had. Um, because you're going to do that if you're, especially if you're online, because the on, the internet's a horrible place. So, you know, just so you know, there's pockets like us, but then there's, the internet's a horrible place. So without further ado, Psalm 136, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him, to him, to him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever, and brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever, and brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army to the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the desert, his love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. To the one who remembers us in our low estate, His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, His love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, His love endures forever. Here ends the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, you know, one thing I want to know is we've... we've 
we, we've all heard the song. Yeah, his love endures forever. And you know, in reading this, I mean, I see I see lots of lines from the song. And I also I want to point out I also see the parts that they don't say. You know, uh, who struck down the firstborn of Egypt? They don't mention that one in the song, do they? Uh, do, do, to him who divided the Red Sea asunder and brought Israel through the midst of it, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. They don't mention that in the song, do they? So, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so, you know, to a certain extent, there's only so much room in a song, how long you want to make the song. But still, I find it interesting where the, what, they, what they cherry-picked on that song. So, um, anyway, uh, think about that next time, next time you listen to that song. And, and uh, uh, see if you can pick out the, you know, the, the, the how many... They don't, they, they, granted, they only use about five, six of those things total in the song. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, it is now 8.25. I have to clock in by 8.30, so I got to get going. God bless. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.